3,665 pounds, the Freedom Express Blast 17 BLSE here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. If what you are looking for is a small little weekend runaround toy hauler for a more limited capacity vehicle, then ladies and gentlemen, you have found the right one for you today. Only 20 feet 4 inches tip to tail, that's tongue to bumper. This is a, uh, well I guess not bumper, just back of the wall. This is a small condensed down little thing. Uh, it's effectively uh, a lot like something like the old Wolf Pup 17 RP that's been adapted to a tandem axle platform. And it's not made for everybody. It's not made for everything. If you've got like a golf cart, if you have like a uh, quad, if you have a couple, uh, you know, dirt bikes or something, that's what this is for. And this is a great weekend runaround buddy camper, but it, I mean, there's nothing that says you couldn't do some park camping with it as well. Obviously, we've got our, uh, you know, air conditioner, LED lighting, everything that you expect out of Freedom Express. Now, this is a Freedom Express SE, which means, in their terms, special edition, but to put that in more simple English terms, simple edition. This is the one that's not jazzed up over the top. Like, you might notice, this camper's not extra wide like a lot of toy haulers are. That's why I call it a crossover. It's not extra tall. It's not extra heavy. And actually, being not heavy is one of the things that this camper does very well. But... You see this little folding bench over here. Obviously, we uh, you know can fold that up out of the way for loading time, but it can also do a couple other things for us. First, if we fold that down, we get some extra uh, like guest bonus sleeping space. So you've got a uh, uh, corner queen up front, and then we've got this in the back. So again, if we are trying to do some buddy camping, or if you've got a kid, this would be that third bed for you right here. Or, I don't know, maybe a big dog. But this is really its primary purpose when it's not in uh, travel mode, and that is to be kind of your, your primary sort of living room seating space. Now you've got this uh, free-floating table over here, and whether it's that tabletop or these countertops, all the counters in this have a, a pressed membrane. Um, what that means is there's no seams for water to be able to penetrate or spill. You know, if you spill something, there's just, it's harder for liquid to get inside of it. Now, what's cool here, this is a completely carpetless camper. It is extremely easy to clean. And you've got your uh, tie downs on the back to keep your load secure. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, get a spun around here. The uh, TV is kind of up out of the way, which is nice because it means that there's more room here for whatever you're loading and that's part of like this is the top of the wheel well right here and they maybe could have extended kitchen countertop space over but had they done so they really would have messed up the loading area and they did want to keep that as open as possible so you might notice that the tv can pivot around for uh, easier viewing over here at the sofa so you're not going to have to do any kind of crazy neck crank now down here uh this is a uh let me pop this open. This is actually a DVD Bluetooth player. You pop that open to pop your disc in. So it's a very simple uh, setup right here, but effective. You know, you figure this whole camper's design is to be simple but effective. But then they left you this open pocket right here. So if you want to expand your entertainment options, if you want to add a Blu-ray, a satellite, or whatever, you have the ability to do that. Or you might notice that little green light right there. This is a perfect little phone charging station, and judging by my phone, it looks like I have a lot of messages to catch up on, but neither here nor there. Um, that uh, uh, green light is also a handy thing here because we are only on 12-volt battery power. These are 12-volt powered outlets, so if you do need to keep your phone kind of topped off a little bit while you are off the grid, you can do that here. Now, this is small enough we don't uh, have or need central air. We don't have or need central heating. Uh, everything is localized, but it's such a small cabin space, it'll be perfectly effective. What I did want to really point out over here, though, is a full two-door, six-cubic-foot fridge freezer, as opposed to a, uh, um, well, like a, a combination uh, five-cubic-foot fridge with a freezer pocket inside. And anytime you're in a small camper, kitchen storage starts to become a concern, but I think they did the best they could with what they had here. So first of all, one of the thoughts that I had is that kitchen countertop overhang right there, that'd be a perfect little spot down on this little area to put a uh, like a little wastebasket and whatnot. Now one of the things that they did here that they do across almost all of the Freedom Express family is they have this wraparound utensil drawer, as I like to refer to it. Um, not the most creative name, but like the rest of the RV, effective. <laughs> so what's neat here is the whole insert can actually be removed and you can take that outside but it wraps around the sink it's the best use of space under sink as opposed to those worthless little sponge drawers now down below 
they did whatever they could wherever they could. You might notice some of it's paneled off. That's because there might be a thing like a water pump down there or a, a furnace. Uh, no, not a furnace vent because this is not ducted heating, but there's a thing, plumbing maybe, down there. They don't want cargo to shift and smash that up. Now, they did have to be careful with space, so they did what a lot of toy haulers do, and they kind of put the microwave down below the stove top where the oven would expect to be. But what that does for us here is it creates a great amount of overhead cabinet space, and this is something toy haulers are traditionally not extremely good at right here. Now, one thing you can do also is you can reach behind the cabinet styles right there. This is called the style for those who are not aware. Um, and you can feel that this is all pocket screwed together. Um, you like you see those commercials, Craig Jigs have been holding cabinets together since blah, blah, blah. Well, that's, that's how these are put together also. And they're still using hardwood cabinet doors. Even though this is the simple edition, they're not uh, scaling down to like particle board and staples, etc. Now, you don't have a normal stovetop vent hood right here. So what they did is they incorporated a uh, additional power ceiling vent fan, which is actually incredibly intelligent. And it's located right next to the stove. So if you want to open the vent and turn on the fan, it's good for two things. One, well, two things. One, heat exhaust when you're cooking. And two, extra light, skylight, extra airflow. You know, it'll do all those things for you. Now up here by, I don't know if you call it the headboard or the footboard of the bed. I suppose it depends on how you choose to climb in. They gave you these open shelves here. So if you just want to toss in some bags, um, you know, the uh, whatever you need. They, the fact is, you know, you've got some nice deep big pockets. You can really stuff some stuff in there. And up here around the corner, an extra little handy pocket. So there's three nice big chunks of space to work with while you're up here. Plus, the full overhead little uh, shelf organizer, I guess you could call it, where you could throw, like, I don't know, more bags or fold more stuff up in there. Now our uh, windows, they are going to have that uh, nice blackout uh, pleated blind right here. And this is a, uh, what is this, 54 by 80 queen, I think, like that. So it's it's a lo it's a normal, like, longer queen, or is it 74? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'll try to get the, the bed measurements listed up um, when I, uh, you know, uh, put my little captions at the bottom of the bed there. I've seen too many numbers on too many things and the numbers are blending together. My apologies. Bathroom. This is one area where compared to the single axle toy haulers that are out there, this one really kind of shines through because instead of a wet bath, what they did is they scaled it up just enough where you can sit on the toilet and not have to have the toilet in the shower. But notice too, it's a shower pan, not a, uh, a tub. So you don't have that big, crazy step up. Now, one more thing that's important to note is this is an extra tall series of campers so that when I step in the shower here, you can see that my head isn't necessarily in the bubble. It's close, but my head's not in the bubble. And as a little bit taller person, that's something I really appreciate. So I've referred to this one as a crossover, which I think is a good uh, descriptor for it. Kind of like some, when something's not an SUV, but it's not a minivan. This is a toy hauler travel trailer crossover. So it keeps the weight in check by not being extra tall, not being extra wide, which also means it's not extra expensive. But that's not the only like weight control method that they apply here. So there's a lot of aluminum skeleton lamination in, in play, which you could probably guess by the fiberglass skin. But it's what's below the skin that also helps. This has a material called Asdel under the skin. And if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, basically a composite resin material. And it is a material substitute directly under the fiberglass skin for um, Luan wood panels. <clears throat> basically, guys, it is uh, a lighter weight material that cannot rot, mold, mildew, has a little bit better sound dampening qualities, a little bit better uh, like uh, heat resistance factors to it, R values if you will. Nothing major on that end, but the biggest point of it is that it's a lighter weight material with superior longevity re and you know like exposure resistance. Now again, this is a standard eight foot body. This is not a crazy wide body thing because this is not made to handle big giant razor toys like that. Not everybody has big giant razor toys. There's plenty of people that still have small things. Um, up front here, we still have power tongue jack, making life simple and easy. And like almost every Freedom Express, and really where th this is really neat on a toy hauler, is this tongue mounted spare tire. Pardon my red battery box there. One of the funny things on a lot of toy haulers, it's like most travel trailers have the spare tire mounted on the bumper, right? We've seen them ro rolling down the road. But on a toy hauler, you have a ramp door. You can't have a tire back there. And you don't want to like mount a tire to the door somehow because that would be extra weight that you have to lift and drop. Well, organically, almost all, well, pretty much all, Freedom Expresses and their sisters, the Apex here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan, they have a tongue-mounted spare tire. 
and that does a couple things for you. It improves ride and handling through superior load balancing because weight in front of the axle carries a little bit better than weight in the back. Plus, you figure you've got your toys back there. Um, but because Freedom Express always puts their tire up front, it means that you never have a loose spare tire that you have to try to figure out where to leave it. And you don't want to just leave spare tires on the floor inside, like under that folding bench or something like that because the oils in the tires will actually seep into the flooring. We learned that when we replaced a couple floors thinking we were smart one time. Um, over here we've got a all centralized hookup facility and even though this is the SE series they still offer separate cable and satellite hookups which I think are pretty cool. This does have an enclosed belly. It is not heated underneath. That, that's an important distinction. A lot of times when people see one, they assume the other goes with it. This is a direct forced air furnace and the chassis is not quite deep enough to run a heat line down there. So I just did simply want to be uh, clear on that. It does have a full walk on roof like all Freedom Expresses. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll see me actually trot all over the roof of a Freedom Express. And another thing they did here, this is one of the things I like about Coachman and the Freedom Express series. They're very good about doing what's important where it's important. They use the, the, the nicer latch systems on this. Like this is not locked currently. I can, I can open this, but if you just hit it, it wants to keep itself shut. It's a positive latch system. You have to force open basically like that to get it to unlock. Plus you have a standard key lock here. So you can always make sure that your load is secure or when you're sleeping inside of it, that you're safe and secure without needing to worry about janky padlocks that can get rusted up or just easily cut off the side of it with a set of bolt cutters. So this one has a couple other neat features to offer besides that obvious awning that I've kicked out right there. If we look over here, this has a different kind of rear screen and I am all about it. If, you know, because the whole goal of this camper is to be lightweight, smaller, but not over the top expensive. They came up finally, instead of that, like I'm not a big fan of that Boy Scout roll it up like a map and sleeping bag, uh, you know, Velcro screen wall. So I looked at this and I went, okay, what is this thing? Because uh, it kind of came all folded up into a little bundle. You can see all the little squares where it was folded up. Well, guys, it's actually, oop, here we go, get that up there. It's actually just magnetic. So when you want it up there, it's got these crazy high-powered magnets, and they are crazy high-powered. That thing is not coming off in the breeze. Now, it does have a central uh, zip-up spot, so if you do want to kind of use that as a pass-through door, you can. And if you are off the grid, you know, because you figure a little thing like this um, is going to be very good for people who do want to go like way off in the sand dunes or the trails or whatever, and they just want to get lost for a day or two. Well, having that rear door open and that extra airflow come through, that's going to be a godsend for you. And keeping the bugs out, well, that'll be even better. And that simple, inexpensive magnet screen, it does all that. And it does it well. I am very happy with that thing. It's funny how sometimes simple can be simply effective. It doesn't have to be expensive, you know? Um, over here, under the awning, we do have tilt and lock awning arms with an auto rain dump feature. So if it is kind of drizzly a little bit there, you can uh, leave that awning out. Now, if it's going to be heavy, windy, heavy, rainy, you always want to put those things in. But that's the beauty of a power awning. If you wake up at night and you hear the awning banging around, frankly, guys, you don't even need to put on pants. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> you like that one, Jody? I liked it. <laughs> so... We've got full length LED lighting under the awning here, outside speakers, outside TV hookups. That table that we talked about or saw inside, you see that it can float around. And again, that does have this uh, the press membrane uh, top, just like the rest of your uh, countertops. So that uh, if, if, again, you do leave it outside overnight and a little bit of uh, humidity, moisture, dew, whatever collects on it, it's not gonna wreck the thing immediately. Um, you don't wanna, you know, hit it like that more often than you have to, but it's okay. Plus it's lightweight and it's very easy to move around. Um, just a quick look down here. We've got our solar power uh, prep plug on the side over here. So if you do want to hook that up to a little portable panel, you can. Um, this is literally still hooked up to the delivery truck as we speak right now. Um, so uh, the uh, I don't have all the stuff out of the basement, but even so, that is a box for that 32 inch TV and you can see how dwarfed it is in this pass through. One of the benefits of that east-west corner bed, guys, is that it actually gives us a larger under-bed storage area accessible from the side over here. And we do still have lighting up front, even though this is the SE series. They, they made sure that it still does everything it needs to. It just doesn't do more than it has to. And that's kind of who these guys are. And I nearly backed into the fifth wheel behind me here. So, 
there you have this one in a nutshell. Chances are you'll have more questions. We welcome those, and I don't care where you live. These things are on wheels and we can get in there. No one is too far away to do business with Halet RV. No such thing. So, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.